we can start. So uh, welcome everyone to my talk on scenarios at runtime, modeling, analyzing, and executing specifications of distributed systems. Um, this talk will be about an Eclipse tool we've been developing over the last year. Basically, we had previous versions of that tool we developed before. Um, it's called Scenario Tools. Uh, you can find it at scenariotools.org currently. This is something that um, um, we've been developing at the Leibniz University Hanover. And um, um, this, is, uh, this is work also of some students of mine. Uh, one can also be here today, uh, generously funded by Bredex. And um, uh, so what, what is this about? Um, in many areas we find uh, also at this conference we hear a lot of buzzwords Internet of Things. Uh, in this morning, uh, we saw that we will in the future have uh, connected cars, like car-to-car -car communication, uh, and uh, we will have something like cyber-physical systems. They will be more and more adaptive, uh, consisting of many components. In industry, um, the uh, software will be more and more distributed. Um, so, for example, production systems, you have distributed control tasks. Um, I mentioned car-to-car -car systems or also other kinds of transportation systems. So these are uh, distributed uh, reactive systems. Um, so uh, how are these systems developed typically today? So you have some uh, development process, more or less uh, iterative, which would start with some customer requirements, some informal vision of what your system should do. And what you do is you go about and uh, specify um, the system in more detail, maybe using some UML diagram, something semi-formal. Uh, you then detail the design, you design the components, the interfaces, the behavior of these components, and then you implement your components. Uh, then you usually test the components, so you run unit tests, uh, then run integration tests, and then at the end you have some sort of acceptance tests and well this may go in this uh, 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 you know in this uh, in such a v model like format but there can also be many iterations here but what happens uh, very often is that these specifications here are ambiguous uh, and uh, not formal so you may use some UML, but uh, you know, maybe it's just some diagrams to clarify some aspects and it's not a fully you know, formal model. Also, you can have inconsistencies here. And because of that, um, when you detail your design or you go and implement the specification, you come uh, at certain points, you, maybe you don't understand certain things or uh, you misinterpret this and very often you just ignore this and try and say, okay, I'm just you know, developing it this way. And later on, during testing, you hope for the best that this is uh, you know, actually everything uh, comes together. But then if you go and, and you do the integration testing or you know, plug everything together, you may find out that you, know, you had some misconceptions about this, how this system should have worked. Uh, you had inconsistencies that now become uh, visible and um, what you have to do is uh, basically uh, iterate through large parts of your development um, and then a lot of money uh, goes, goes down the drain. So one of the, one of the major sources why in this particular uh, do domain uh, there is this problem is that the specifications uh, look as follows. So you will, from a bird's eye perspective, you will say, what is the, how should my com the components of my system interact? So think of a distributed car system, a car-to-car -car system, or something else. Um, you know, you would say, okay, um, you would look at the, the component architecture from a bird's eye perspective, and you will describe what the system does in terms of scenarios or use cases. So you would say, Okay, if this uh, user requests that, then this component talks to that component, and this one to that one, and this answers this back, and then, you know, we get this information back to the user, and maybe there's some other scenario where something else happens. So, 
what you have here is a bird's eye perspective of how the system should work. And later on, if you detail the design and you go towards implementation, um, you have something else. So you have for all these components, you have different chunks of uh, code, which is where all this, you know, this, this, these requirements here, which are inter-object, then have to be manifested in the code for every component. Um, maybe you have some procedural code or you use some state chart, state-based models to describe this. Um, but it's an intercomponent view. So people take ownership of these components and they sort of focus only on their individual components, right? So you have people uh, developing it from this perspective from inside the components, okay? So, um, so that's the problem that this transition is very difficult and very error prone, right? Um, and so this is why we have these problems in this development uh, process. So one idea of one approach to remedy this is to try and uh, formalize the specification. So get rid of the errors and inconsistencies as early as possible and formalize the design as early as possible on this intercomponent inter uh, scenario-based level. And the vision is that from this uh, kind of formal specification, maybe this is something that you can simulate or you can communicate also with others. Um, this is something you can check in an automa automated, automatic way uh, for inconsistencies and um, maybe in certain cases it's also possible to fully automatically extract, extract controller uh, models or controller code from such specifications. Also, you know, thinking this further, you may want to, uh, you know, if, if you don't synthesize controllers uh, automatically, if this is something you still do by hand, you would also uh, like to derive tests from such specifications. So automatic, automatic test suite synthesis is something you would like to do. And may, maybe there's other things you can do also during runtime. Uh, maybe this, this specification would be a basis for engineering incrementally, um, you know, changes more quickly, uh, maybe do something like updates at runtime and all kinds of other uh, things that I don't want to get into much detail on. Okay, so this is the vision, and this is something which we have uh, in parts uh, been working on uh, in scenario tools. So what I'll be talking about today is I'll uh, give you a little introduction to our specification language. Uh, you see already it's uh, like a textual DSL. Um, I will talk to you, uh, I, I will show you our execution um, framework and how you it allows you to simulate the behavior that you specified using uh, this uh, formal specification language. And then I'll also show you how we can uh, automatically uh, synthesize controllers or uh, realizability check such specifications. So it means, is the specification realizable? Can I, you know, uh, yeah, is, is, does there exist an implementation for the specification or are contradictions, inconsistencies, uh, uh, are they in the specification? And so I cannot realize the specification. Okay, this is something we can check. Okay, so let's go. Uh, and look at the specification language. Um, and I'll do this based on an example of a case study that we have done with uh, um, uh, an automotive uh, software supplier in our area. Um, and uh, the system which we've been looking at is a control, uh, interf uh, an interface for a high voltage coupling. So the idea is if you have electrical vehicles or hybrid cars, or trucks um, uh, that have uh, uh, a battery, a high voltage battery with uh, some hundred, um, hundreds of volts, you may want to plug in, for example, cooling systems to this battery. And because this is, uh, has such high voltage, you cannot have a simple plug as, as you, you, know, you see them around here or you think of your uh, 12 volt interface uh, plugs in your car. So these are very safety critical because if you pull, pull a plug um, uh, which has uh, 500 volts running through it, uh, then you can have uh, arcs and uh, injuries. 
So you have, there is a software controlled locking mechanism which locks the plug into place. And uh, well, this is quite, uh, looks quite simple, but uh, with all the details and the safety, uh, the safety measurements, this has been uh, already a complex uh, uh, system. Uh, we'll, we'll consider a very much simplified version next, um, but, this is, um, but this is the system we're looking at. So we have a high voltage battery, um, maybe some, uh, some device we want to connect to, and this is called a FlexPi, a flexible power interface. Um, and there's also a, a publication we have if you want to know more about this case study. So what you have here is the plug, okay? And you have a socket which can be locked or unlocked. Uh, you have relays that can be opened or closed. And you have start and stop buttons so you can start, uh, you, can, you, can, um, you can establish a, an, a connection um, which then closes the relays and you can also stop and open the relays and then you know, unplug the plug. So that's sort of the, the behavior here. And um, so what, what we start out with is uh, we draw some kind of uh, um, an architecture of the, of the components or objects that we have in the system. And here it's, uh, um, we have three software components, a main controller, a controller for the socket, a controller for the relays. And we have then as external components the socket and relays, so these are uh, sensor, sensor and actuator components, so they, the socket will tell you when something is plugged in and the socket controller can also tell the socket to lock or unlock. And then we have the start and stop button uh, and the main controller gets notified when these uh, buttons are pressed. So now this is, uh, this is just a picture um, and in our language, uh, I said it's a textual DSL, we would, uh, we would model this um, uh, textually and using uh, EMF. So what, uh, what we do, first of all, in our specification, we import some kind of uh, eCore model in which we define the classes of our model. And also, which I'll, I'll show you in a demo in a, in a second, we have some instance of that model which, which reflects this, uh, this system architecture. Okay, so what we have next uh, is we say, okay, we have this uh, a specification of the system flex pi. Um, here we refer to a package in this uh, eCore file. And what we do here is we have, uh, we de define classes of objects to be controllable or uncontrollable. So controllable are the software components usually and uncontrollable are usually some co external components, sensors, actuators or users or external software components. And then we define collaborations and uh, collaborations are uh, yeah, some, some units of behavior. So a collaboration describes how objects interact to fulfill some fun functionality in some situation. So we may have a collaboration uh, where we model how it, how the plugging and starting should work. There may be another collaboration saying how the stopping and unplugging works. Um, this could also be one if you want. Uh, you can detail it further. So this is, um, this is just something to, to modularize your pieces of behavior. Um, and in the collaboration, we define roles which are similar to roles in UML. So they represent objects that do some specific task in this uh, collaboration. Um, so one requirement could be when the start button is pressed, the relay contacts must close. Um, and uh, coming from UML, you would like to do, you would like to describe this interaction using a sequence diagram, which could look like this. So you would say if the start button is pressed, so there's a signal from the start button to the main controller, then the following should happen. So the, the main controller must send a close contact signal to the relay controller. The relay controller should tell the relays to close. And then the relay controller should tell the main controller that uh, the relays have been closed. So um, this could be, in this case, it would be setting an attribute, a Boolean attribute from false to true. Um, 
And this is something we had, as in the previous version, realized uh, also <laughs> using UML sequence diagrams in Papyrus, um, but for uh, the sake of having a more extensible uh, language um, and something where you know, certain editing features are more, more simple, um, we decided to move towards a textual DSL and basically this uh, sequence diagram which we see here is now something that we represent as a textual uh, scenario specification. So we have messages here um, which say from a certain uh, uh, from, from this object start button or role to the main controller start pressed ascent. So this is essentially the same as the message and we use certain modalities for the messages <laughs> to express um, that a certain strict order of uh, messages has to, be, uh, uh, has to be kept and also we have a, a requested keyword which says that this message must occur at some point so it's not uh, it's not, uh, if, if you're expecting this message and it's requested, it's not valid uh, if this message never is sent. Okay. Um, so, I mean, this behavior now, we have, we have said what happens if somebody presses the start button. Also, we describe what happens if somebody plugs in something. So you plug in something, uh, the socket controller gets notified and then tells the main controller that something was plugged. The main controller says, okay, look, lock the socket, it gets locked, and then it tells you it was locked. So this is something uh, how, how you would like the system to behave, okay? And this is again the same in our textual representation. And uh, I'll, I'll spare you with the details, so we have some, uh, some more um, things. Uh, maybe, maybe this is, uh, uh, the, yeah, well, uh, there's one requirement that says if you unplug, um, then it, uh, it must, you must not unplug while the contacts are closed, while the relays contacts are closed. So this must not happen. And also if you close the contact, then the, the plug must be plugged in and the socket must be locked. So these are additional requirements. Okay? So this is something that we can execute. Um, and this is a picture of, uh, of our execution environment, how it looks, and this is where I'm uh, going to switch into the demo mode quickly. So what you see here is, um, uh, is, uh, is a, um, a perspective very similar to the Java debug environment. And um, so this is what we see here. Um, and quickly again here you see um, the, uh, the, 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 yeah, the resources for this project. So we have uh, an eCore model uh, with some classes and um, a dy dynamic instance file of, of these classes. So we have a FlexPy system with one socket, one uh, set of relays, one start button, stop button, etc. cetera. Um, this is the, the specification. Uh, which I've shown you also before. And then also we have a run configuration which says take this specification and take this instance model and basically um, here's a mapping of objects to roles in the specification and this is all we need uh, to execute it. So we can go into, uh, oh, there's still an old uh, execution running, but we can then run this uh, um, the specification and what we can now see here. So here's a view which so shows uh, um, yeah, states or events that you have been executing. Uh, here you see objects and here you see message messages that you can now go and execute. And let's say we have in mind, okay, now we want to plug in the plug and uh, do uh, and then uh, see what happens then. So so we plug in. And um, here we see this activated, this triggered a scenario. Um, we can we can see here it's at, it's at a certain uh, it's a, it's in a certain state or cut we call this. Um, and so if we a plug in occurred uh, next, we must do the set plugged, and this is something that then gets suggested here as one possible event to be executed next. So so this is something which we can do, and here we see. 
more and more uh, events and states um, uh, yeah, uh, get recorded here and shown in this uh, simulation <coughs> graph view. So we can also go back and uh, um, try something else and then, okay, we do, we, here we can do start and then do close contact and now, ha, huh, so this is something which now created a violation in our, uh, in our execution. So here it says violation in a specification scenario um, and this is something which is uh, still enabled here. Um, and what happened is now that we closed, that we set close contact. And this is somehow, uh, this is somehow a violation of the scenario when not plugged and locked, then relay closed forbidden. So let's look at this. So this says, okay, no, no close contact, sorry. So cl cl if close contact occurs and then a certain <laughs> Uh, condition is not met, we will have a violation. And here it says, um, you know, you can only close the contact when the plug is plugged and locked. Okay, because um, this condition is violated, uh, we have a violation here. So what can we do? We have this requirement still, um, but for sure, there must be now an exception, right? So not always when we press start, we must close the contact, but we have seen you know, a case where this must not be. So this is actually something which you see here as a comment. What's missing in this scenario is uh, this exception that if you press start, not always uh, do you, should you close the contacts. Um, you should only close the contacts if the uh, if the plug is plugged and the socket is locked, okay? So otherwise, if this is not the case, then interrupt this scenario here, okay? So this is a change, let's save that. Uh, let's terminate the simulation and rerun it. Um, so what did we do? Um, the, the problem started when we did start press. So now if we click start press, nothing happens, we see here uh, well, a self-transition, uh, but we remain in this state. And this is because this interrupt occurs right after the start pressed. So actually, if start pressed occurred, you know, nothing happens. This scenario is activated, but it's immediately interrupted because this condition uh, yields an interrupt here, okay? So what we can do instead is we can do, okay, let's first plug it in. Okay, set plugged, set locked, unlock the socket, and tell the main controller about it. And then we can do start press, uh -huh, close contact, close, and um, so we can, uh, we, can, we can focus on the most recent states. So this is now something which works, okay? So we would now like to know um, if everything is fine. You know, let's say we've simulated uh, a couple of things, um, but do, doing simulation, like in testing, we are never really sure if we found all the problems in the specification. So what we would like to do um, is prove this more exhaustively. And what we can do um, is um, I'll, I'll switch back to the slides quickly. Um, what we can do is, um, so the, the simulation cannot find all the bugs. We employ something which is called controller synthesis. So we have an algorithm which attempts to build a state machine, more or less, um, which satisfies the specification uh, assuming all different, all, all nasty things that can happen in the environment, right? So we, we sort of play through all possible sequences of environment events and check whether there exists a system that can react to this specification, uh, to, this, to, to, these, to the environment while satisfying the specification. And this is something which, uh, which, which, uh, which boils down to game theory and it's, a, it's basically a two-player game played by the system against the environment. And we check if there's a winning strategy for this two-player game, okay? 
So this is something, I'll again switch to the demo, um, which we can do by the press of a button. Let's uh, terminate this, uh, I already did, this simulation. Um, we, can, uh, we can do this um, by right-clicking and uh, activating or performing the synthesis here. And what we see here, we explored a couple of states and a couple of transitions, but um, well, maybe there should be some, some, some red uh, error sign, but what we are looking for is that here now it says false. So there is something still, uh, still problematic, something still wrong in our specification. It's still inconsistent. So um, what we can do is we can save the strategy and in the background we have um, something that builds a graphis representation of the state space we have explored. And we can generate um, um, a PDF from this and we can have, we can ha look at it at, in our favorite PDF viewer. And what we see here is there are some uh, some things that work out fine. So this is the green part, um, which says, okay, from these states on, everything looks good. But here we have a violation of our, um, of a specification scenario. So what we see here is an unplug event occurs, and then this violates when relay closed, unplug forbidden. So unplug is forbidden when, the, when there is a current uh, running in the system. So, um, okay, so this is very complicated to like, like detect the problem now, but the problem is that here we have an unplug after locking the socket, okay? So we lock the socket and then we still can have an unplug. And this is something which intuitively should not happen, right? But this is something which we have not explicitly uh, modeled. I mean, okay, you, it could be that you, if you pull the plug, uh, you know, you can destroy the locking mechanism and pull it nevertheless, but we would assume that if you lock the plug into place, you cannot unplug it, you, so, bef so you must unlock it before, okay? So what we can do is then model this explicitly in our specification. So what we can do is we can uh, specify so-called assumption scenarios which model some, or with, which allow you to model not only the behavior of your software, but also you can specify what can, must or must not happen in your environment. And what we see here is that between a lock event and an unlock event, you cannot have the unplug of the socket, or of the plug in the socket, okay? So if, when you specify this, and uh, if you add this assumption and you again attempt to synthesize a controller, now we have something which has no contradictions uh, in it anymore. So here exists a strategy and uh, we can also render the uh, graphical representation of the state um, space which we have explored. And here green basically means uh, green states the system can guarantee the satisfaction of the specification, okay? All right. Okay, so this is what we call realizability checking and it's a great way of showing you flaws in your specification. Um, okay, this is uh, what I just showed you. Um, the last feature I want to talk about that this, uh, that this is something which we have, uh, uh, where we have actually taken this capability of, uh, of executing behavior within the Eclipse debug environment, we have taken this behavior uh, and uh, taken it to IoT connected devices and execute the specification there. So what you see here is, uh, is a photo of a project done by a few students, uh, by a group of students this summer. And what we did is we uh, modeled um, a car to X scenario, um, where, which basically is something uh, you know, that, that you will find um, in, in cars in the future. For example, some cars that communicate among each other and with the road infrastructure to, uh, to handle uh, certain traffic situations more efficiently, for example, passing roadworks. So what we have here is 
we have scenarios um, where if a car approaches the roadworks, they must register and the, 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 there is some control station which knows if there's uh, you know, cars approaching uh, that may have the right of way and then either they disallow or allow a driver to, to pass the roadworks and da da da. So I won't go into all the details of the specification. It's uh, many hundred uh, lines long. Um, but this is now something which we can, which we could execute on, uh, on Raspberry Pi robots, which communicate via MQTT. Um, and here you see, okay, there is uh, also some, some roadworks and we had these Raspberry Pi robots running in a circle. So this is uh, something, you know, similar to the train, uh, Lego train uh, you saw outside, but we used uh, uh, these robots which followed lines. And uh, these colored markers, they, they are detected by an RGB sensor and they, you know, are certain events uh, reaching certain points in the street system. So this is, uh, this is something there's, uh, there's also a video, uh, but I don't think we have much time for, uh, for uh, looking into this. Um, so this, these are the students um, that worked on this project. And uh, this, is, uh, this is an architecture of how uh, we actually um, realized this as a distributed um, you know, system working with MQTT. Um, so basically it works by if that a client, for one robot, so this is one robot, it would, for example, uh, detect some event by a sensor. Um, then we have here an MQTT client component in the robot, which would then broadcast this event via an MQTT broker to all the other clients. And uh, um, they, an, a client may then receive this message. And maybe this is something which is uh, an event telling it to, to uh, you know, do something with their actuators like uh, brake or accelerate or so on. And um, uh, then this is also something that drives an internal version of our scenario tools uh, execution engine. Okay. Okay. So to summarize what uh, what I've shown you, um, I've shown you um, scenario tools how it supports the formal, but also still quite intuitive scenario-based specification. Um, and um, what maybe you've seen, um, but uh, but I want to emphasize this is that these scenarios. Uh, also support an easy incremental development, right? So you can just add scenarios to your specification and they will add behavior and they can also constrain some behavior of other scenarios which you already have. Um, the simulation and the automatic realizability checking are very helpful for finding inconsistencies very early in your design, right? So not that you stumble upon them during, you know, testing a few weeks after. Um, and we, I showed you our scenarios at runtime prototype, um, which allows you to really execute your scenario specifications in a distributed system. So, for example, you know, IoT applications, car-to-car -car communication systems, and so on. All right. Thanks very much. <laughs> Questions? Okay, if there's no questions.